Good day, fellow learners. Once again, this is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapos, joining you for our session number six for our Next Generation NCLEX RN Pointer Series. Okay, so before we get to start, I'd like to first and foremost, of course, invite you to join our rooster of passers for now USRNs. So give us a text or call at 0906-201-9383 or send us a message, email us to info at ragapusreview.com. So let's begin this time around. Let's learn from Jen Gomez. Now take note, Jen used to be just my student and now she's part of the Ray Gapus Mentors International Group of Mentors, okay? So this is how she studied for the test. Let's get through it. So I look back at my NCLEX journey, a weekend Gapus baby for four months. So she did the weekend classes, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. online. And then she says, Bagumod 6 p.m., 6 a.m. ICU nurse duty, okay? Answered and reviewed 200 to 300 questionnaires per day, of course, that's embedded in our system. Attended the three-day intensive face-to-face -face coaching with Ray. That's the quick fix, which I do every month. Completed nine days of Simbangabi with pure and <laughs> sincere intention. I always ensure to carry positive vibes and I refrain from being hard to myself. Of course, you have to treat yourself. If you do well in a quiz or a test, treat yourself to any of the fast food chains available, Jollibee, to facilitate the ease of learning and absorbing tons of lectures. After three to five hours of studying per day, I go out, breathe, travel, drive, eat, talk to family and friends. I always make a list of my daily schedules and watch over my timeline. I talk to my departed loved ones. Wow. <laughs> I just hope they did not come to visit you every night, okay? And ask if they are still there. I ask for their guidance. Most importantly, I pray sincerely. I even tell to God, pag bumagsak po ako, if I fail, tatanggapin ko po. I will accept it. At dodoblehin ang pagsisikap pag nag -retake. And I will double my efforts if I indeed will need to retake. God knows. It's take one. You see? If you believe you can do it, you just want take, you can. But take note at the Ray Gapo system, we're not going to let you go. I let you go only. I let you fly when you pass the end click. So it simply means for as long as you want to be in our system for the longest time you can, two years, three years at most if you want, go ahead if you want to master my concepts because there's no two specific programs that are the same, especially in the bootcamp and in the quick fix session. So if you only have like 10 days to spare, join my bootcamp, it's going to be done. The next schedule is going to be July 24 to August 4. Give us a ring or a text. Okay, so let's move on now to our pointers and let me begin by giving you some of the things that if I were the student who will be taking the test anytime soon, these are the drugs that I have to focus on. Here we go. First, you have tamsulosin. Yeah, that's how you that's how you pronounce it. Tamsulosin, not tamsulosin. Ah, tamsulosin. Charing. <laughs> that's the social way. Tamsulosin. Okay. So this medication is used for the treatment of benign prostatic hypertrophy. In essence, question is, what will it do? Remember, for tamsulosin, you have to know the outcome. And the outcome of taking the medication is related to decreasing the common symptoms of BPH. Now, we know for a fact the common symptoms of BPH are frequency, urgency, hesitancy, nocturia, decreased size and force, and urinary stream. So therefore, how would you know that tamsulosin is effective? So it will decrease, remember the code, win PF, okay? You will win your professional fee. So win PF, but win is spelled as W-H-I-N. So W, it will decrease weak stream of urine. It will decrease hesitancy. It will decrease incomplete emptying of the bladder. And then N, it will decrease nocturia. Win, W-H-I-N, weak stream, hesitancy, incomplete emptying of the bladder, and nocturia. And then PF, it will decrease painful urination and it will decrease frequency. In essence, the primary symptoms of your BPH will be decreased when tamsulosin is used. Now, the next question of the patient 
would probably be, when is the best time to take the medication? Take note, the medication should be in your system for a good six hours at least. Therefore, the best time to take the medication should be the morning after breakfast, on the, in the morning after breakfast, or after the first meal, or after the first snack of the day. So for as long as you're taking it in the morning and it's staying in your system for a good six hours, it would help in the management of BPH. However, what do you need to check if your patient is taking tamsulosin? Take note, you will need to focus on how the kidneys of the patient are excreting the medication. So you will have to check the creatinine clearance. If the creatinine clearance is less than 10 ml per minute, then the use of tamsulosin is contraindicated. Why? It simply means that the kidneys of the patient are not healthy enough to promote the excretion of the medication. So there's a great potential that the medication could accumulate in the body and would eventually damage the kidneys, okay? So next important thing, you have your neuroleptic malignant syndrome, NMS. Now, your neuroleptic malignant syndrome is an adverse effect associated with your neuroleptics or major antipsychotics, okay? Major tranquilizers or antipsychotics. Now, the most common antipsychotic in which, which NMS is associated with is your haloperidol or haldol. Now, haloperidol is a typical, so it's typical antipsychotic. So why do we have to highlight that haloperidol is typical antipsychotic? Because take note, typical antipsychotics will just decrease the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, whereas your atypical antipsychotics like your clozapine will decrease both the positive and the negative symptoms of schizophrenia. So haloperidol is typical antipsychotic. So it will just decrease the positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Remember the code DH low AC. So it will decrease delusions, hallucinations, looseness of association, agitation, word salad, ambivalence, and confusion. So your haloperidol will not Take note, it will not decrease your apathy. It will not decrease your alogia or poverty of speech. It will not decrease your anhedonia or lack of interest in pleasurable things, including sex. And it will not decrease your asociality, including your abolition or lack of motivation. Those negative symptoms will be decreased by your clozapine, which is an atypical antipsychotic. Now, what syndrome would tell you that your patient is having neuroleptic malignant syndrome? In essence, what are a group of signs and symptoms? Take note. First and foremost, take a look at the vital signs. There's usually very high fever, hyperpyrexia, above 38 degrees centigrade or above 102 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. Then you have elevated pulse rate, elevated respiratory rate, but take note, the blood pressure is fluctuating or unstable. Sometimes you have a very high BP, sometimes you have low BP. So the abnormalities in vital signs coupled with muscle rigidity and diaphoresis together with altered level of consciousness that defines your neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Now question, what should be the priorities for neuroleptic malignant syndrome? First and foremost, since you have very high fever, the priority should be to lower down the temperature. So what is your priority? Administer your bromocryptine that will decrease the temperature. And then you need to decrease muscle rigidity. And there are two drugs that could be given. You have your dantrolene to decrease muscle rigidity or amantadine to decrease muscle rigidity. So two priorities, decrease the temperature and to decrease muscle rigidity. The medication to decrease the body temperature would be bromocryptine. The medication to decrease the muscle rigidity could either be your dantrolene or Amantadine. Okay, so let's move on to the next. Okay, the next one would be your folic acid. We all know that folic acid can be sourced from green leafy vegetables. Okay, however, okay, for non pregnant patients, the requirement would be 400 micrograms per day. For pregnant patients, you will have to increase that to 600 micrograms per day. So, therefore, pregnant patients will need to receive 
additional folic acid in the form of tablets in order to prevent neural tube defects or to prevent spina bifida or myelo meningocele or meningomyelo cell, okay? So your folic acid is essential for the prevention of your neural tube defect. Therefore, what are the common sources of folic acid? Remember your A, B, C. So A would be asparagus and avocado, so vegetable and fruit. B would be beans, broccoli, and banana. Once again, vegetables and fruit. And then C, you have citrus fruits, cauliflower, and chickpea. So once again, vegetables and fruits. So green leafy vegetables would be very high in folic acid. Now, however, if you are giving folic acid tablets, what should you instruct your patient? The absorption of folic acid is decreased by the intake of tea. Therefore, instruct the patient to take folic acid tablets with water and avoid tea because tea decreases the absorption of folic acid. Now take note, if the patient would ask you, when is the best time to take your folic acid? It could be taken in the morning or in the evening with or without food. For as long as you're not drinking it with tea, avoid tea, okay? Now take note, your folic acid is your vitamin D9 that will help prevent neural tube defect. Avoid tea, remember. Okay, so, and the second specific preparation for the NCLEX, you have to have the appropriate technology when you're studying. Okay, take note, our learning tools are uniquely created based on Gen Z learner characteristics of the Ray Gapo system. I am the first Filipino author, so blessed to have written a book for the world's number one healthcare publishers, Mosby Elsevier. That's Essential Concepts for the Philippine Nurse Licensure Exam. Take note, it sold 50,000 copies and it won in the International Book Awards, the first Filipino book to have won that award. And of course, we have our own system. So it's called the Ray Gapos Core Shell. So it's available for $149 for limited access for our QBank as well as next generation NCLEX RN sample question in the style that you will see in the actual test. Okay. And of course, you have NCLEX RN in your flash published by Jones and Bartlett USA. Uh, the local title of this book is NCLEX 311, okay? So these are the Ray Gapus core shells, which you can avail of um, for a very, very low fee of $149, okay? So, and the most important thing of them all when you're studying you have to be in a conducive environment. This is the kind of environment where we conduct our classes at the Ray Gapo system. This is our NCLEX simulation room with limited number of students. And of course, this is how we do our classes and our bootcamp. Please do register anytime soon because classes usually gets full early every month. We do every month or monthly schedule. We have an AM or PM class, or if you want to get it exclusively over the weekend, you want a delayed telecast and limited video watching, or if you want, okay, you can just attend the weekend. It's your choice of li or live face-to-face -face class or live virtual class or on-demand and limited video recorded lessons. And then you get a copy of my three books plus the QBank plus next generation NCLEX RN strategies and sample questions and quick fix sessions. You will get that for free. So take note. This is what we call the next generation NCLEX R NCLEX, the most flexible test preparation class for the NCLEX RN. So I'll see you in any of those classes. Once again, this is your mentor, your fact check buddy Ray Gap who's saying you can do it if you know your functional concepts. For those of you who may want to watch my lengthy videos, we still have it here. Look for our quick fix video for the NCLEX. See you in my next video.